Occasionally, there are stories that appear too bizarre to be true. And the case we have today is so strange, you may not believe it, but it's all fact. What is up, Iwu crew? Today we are talking about a true case of literal walking dead and a chicken with a powerful will to live. We are taking a look at the curious story of Mike the Chicken, who only found fame once he lost his head. Let's get into it. September 10th, 1945, on a farm in Fruta, Colorado, Lloyd Olson was preparing for dinner with his wife and mother-in-law. It was his duty to pick one of their chickens from the yard to cook up for their meal. Olson decided that their five and a half month old chicken named Mike would make for a tasty meal. But what appeared to be a simple matter of killing the chicken and plucking him for dinner went completely wrong. Despite having killed between 40 and 50 animals before this point, Olson's ax didn't quite hit the mark. Even after he delivered what should have been a killing blow, Mike the Chicken stood up and teetered away before breaking into a run. However, Mike no longer had his head. Despite Olson's attempt to behead Mike, the chicken continued to walk around the yard. This wasn't entirely unusual, as sometimes chickens can take a few moments to die after being beheaded. Beheading can frequently result in neurons firing, especially if a chicken is lying down when being decapitated. Its legs will twitch to the point of actually managing to run without a head. Sometimes beheaded chickens can run around for up to 15 minutes, and so Olsen wasn't shocked at first. But Mike just kept walking, even long after the cat had grabbed the head and ran off with it. Thinking that at some point the poor animal would die, Olsen put the headless Mike into an apple box for the night, expecting it to die peacefully at some point, but he didn't. Discovering the next day that the animal somehow was still alive, Olsen eventually threw Mike into the back of his horse-drawn wagon and took what he assumed would soon be a chicken carcass into the town of Fruta in order to sell it at the meat market. The wife of Olsen's great-grandson later shared that while in town, Olsen had started betting people beer or something that he had a live, headless chicken. He earned himself more than a few beers, along with notoriety for possessing a live, headless chicken, which many people found fascinating. Right away, the local newspaper wrote a feature on the miracle. After a full day went by and the chicken was still alive, Olsen realized that Mike would be able to survive long after losing his head. And so, seeing Mike's will to live, he decided to care for the chicken and attempt to keep him alive for even longer. Even without a head, Mike continued to act like many of the other chickens. Mike didn't appear to even notice that he no longer had his head, as he would still try to preen his feathers, peck for his food, and even balance on a perch and stumble clumsily across it. He would still try to crow along with the other chickens, but without a mouth, the noise he made sounded like a throaty gurgle. In order to keep Mike living and healthy, he had to eat, but being that the bird was without a head, Olsen was met with a strange obstacle to keep his miracle chicken alive. Despite no longer having a mouth through which to eat, Olsen found an ingenious way to feed Mike. The chicken was able to survive by being fed directly into his throat and esophagus through an eyedropper. Mike survived on a mixture of water with milk dripping right into his throat. And sometimes, very small pieces of corn, grain, and worms. The Olsons also used a syringe to keep Mike's throat clear of mucus, and therefore able to breathe clearly. Oddly enough, even though Mike no longer had a head, he managed to stay rather healthy with the dedicated help of the Olsons. The rest of Colorado, and soon the entire U.S., became shocked and obsessed with Mike the Headless Chicken. 
After his severed head was retrieved, Mike was often photographed for national newspapers, alongside his missing body part. At the time, touring sideshows were incredibly popular, featuring anomalies in humans and animals to gather large crowds who paid to have a look at the people and things they deemed shocking. A sideshow promoter seeking out the weird and interesting caught wind of the living headless chicken and traveled a 300-mile journey from Salt Lake City, Utah to Fruta, Colorado just to get a look for himself. The promoter, Hope Wade, was fascinated with Mike and offered the Olsons a chance to make some money by having the headless chicken join a sideshow. Unable to refuse such a tempting offer, Mike the Headless Chicken, along with his owners the Olsons, joined a traveling sideshow in order to take him on the road for the rest of the U.S. to come and gawk at the phenomenon. They began their tour in Salt Lake City, where Mike was an instant hit, before quickly setting out on a tour of the southeastern U.S. The Olsons did, however, take the time to first stop at the University of Utah in order to allow Mike to be closely examined, as the Olsons were frequently accused of fraud. After some intense scrutiny by scientists, Mike was officially announced as legitimate. The university went on to try to replicate another living headless chicken, but all of their attempts were in vain. Mike appeared to be the one in a million. The scientists realized that the reason Mike was able to survive without his head was because he had technically only been partially beheaded. The axe had just missed his jugular vein, but the real miracle was that he had developed a blood clot that stopped him from bleeding out after losing his head. Even though most of his head had been chopped off, his entire brain stem and one of his ears was left intact. The brain stem is often referred to as the control panel as it controls the most basic motor functions of the body, such as breathing, heart rate, and digestion, all of the pieces that are critical for survival. If Mike had been any other animal, he likely wouldn't have survived. But because chickens have rather simplistic brains, which are located mostly at the back of their head rather than the front, he kept the most important parts, allowing him to live. Chicken's reflex actions are also controlled by the brain stem, which is why he could still walk. While touring with the sideshows, Mike became known as Miracle Mike, and most of the country was enthralled by him. The sideshow visited Atlantic City, New York, Los Angeles, San Diego, and many other places as people queued up to catch a glimpse of Miracle Mike. The headless chicken became a gold mine for the Olsons, who had left a struggling small farm behind, only returning when they had to harvest. At the sideshow, the admission cost to witness Mike on display was 25 cents per person, almost $4 in today's currency. Mike became incredibly popular and soon was earning the Olsons $4,500 every single month, over $65,000 today. At the height of his popularity, Mike was valued to be worth $10,000, which is an incredible amount for a chicken, almost $146,000 today. His fame was almost unmatched for other animals. Mike was featured in both Time Magazine and Life Magazine, and eventually he even gained a Guinness World Record. However, not all of the attention he received was positive. The Olsons were frequently sent mail, most of it fan letters. But on one occasion, someone compared the Olsons to Nazis. Given the year, 1945 and World War II, Nazis were on everyone's mind. But the author of the letter never explained exactly what they meant. Another letter propositioned the Olsons to give them Mike's drumstick in a strange exchange for a wooden leg. Often, many of the letters weren't even addressed to the Olsons, but rather, the owners of the Headless Chicken in Colorado. And because of their national notoriety, many of the letters managed to find their way to the Olsons' farm. During the touring, 
Mike the Headless Chicken actually managed to gain weight through the Olsen's feeding regime, growing from two and a half pounds when he first lost his head to almost eight pounds. Olsen said in an interview that Mike was a robust chicken, a fine specimen of a chicken except for not having a head. No one knows how long Mike may have managed to live if given the chance, because despite what many may assume, he died by an unfortunate accident rather than anything related to losing his head. On March 17, 1947, in Phoenix, Arizona, while staying in a motel, Mike accidentally began to choke. During the night, a kernel of corn had somehow got caught in his throat. The tragedy of Mike the Headless Chicken became more tragic as unfortunately the Olsons had accidentally left the syringes they used to feed and clean him at the sideshow from the previous day. Because of this, there was nothing they could do to save Mike from choking. However, the cause of his death was disputed. Some later claimed that he died because his severed trachea had finally collapsed and so he could no longer breathe. Either way, the phenomenon of the headless chicken ended in 1947, a shocking 18 months after he had first lost his head. The Olsons themselves claimed for years that they had sold Mike to a guy in the sideshow circuit in order to explain his absence. Unable to admit that they had accidentally allowed Mike to choke under their care, they only confessed his true manner of death after a few years following the incident. One thing they never admitted, though, was what they did with Mike's body. Many people would have likely paid good money to stuff Mike and keep him as part of the sideshow attraction, though more for the story, as he was famous for living, and in death, he lost much appeal. However, the Olsen's great-grandson, Troy Waters, has speculated about the fate of the chicken's body, saying, I'm willing to bet he got flipped out in the desert somewhere between here and Phoenix, on the side of the road, probably eaten by coyotes. Though Mike made impressive amounts of money, the headless chicken hardly did much to change the Olsen's lives in the long run. They reportedly used most of the money to buy new and modern farming equipment, and a 1946 Chevrolet pickup truck, but still spent the rest of their lives working on their farm. When Olsen was asked if he had enjoyed touring the sideshows with Mike the Headless Chicken, he replied, Oh yeah, I had a chance to travel around and see parts of the country I probably otherwise wouldn't have seen. Disturbingly, many people have since attempted to replicate the miracle of Mike. Even Olsen later tried to find a way to recreate his money-making live headless chicken, all to no avail. The Olsons had a neighbor who would frequently show up to their farm with a case of beer and a crate of his own chickens to convince Olsen to create another amazing headless chicken, but they never managed to. The exact cut which took off Mike's head, one that preserves the brain stem, is possible to repeat, but the main reason that the many other attempts to replicate Mike have failed is because it was the chance blood clot that saved Mike's life and allowed him to survive without a head. This type of blood clot is quite rare and can't be forced to occur. When others cut off their chicken's head, leaving the brainstem intact, the poor animals often still bleed out. Despite no longer being alive, Mike's fame remains. To this day in Fruta, Colorado, there is an annual celebration in May of Mike the Headless Chicken Day. The event is celebrated with many chicken-themed games, such as pinning the head on the chicken. Mike has now become the punchline of the well-known joke, asking how long a chicken can survive after having its head chopped off. The answer is, apparently, 18 months, during which Mike managed to not only live without a head, but thrive as a strange form of entertainment.